I have loved all things Sleepy Hollow and Headless Horseman since I was a young boy. The Adventures of Ichabod Crane from Disney was my first taste of Halloween fun. This production came to Granbury, Texas, as you can see by this super cute trolley car. It's right off the square in Granbury, Texas, also in Virginia. Check the video description for the website, brianclaudis.com. Brian Claudis Experiences puts on the Sleepy Hollow Experience. You can see there was lots of people there. I'm going to quiet down. Oh, they even had a little bar in the back. Trust me, you want to go. Go early. I'm going to shut up. Enjoy the Sleepy Hollow Experience from Brian Cloudus Experiences. Enter Tiny Town, better known as Sleepy Hollow, a drowsy, dreamy little spot during its early days of settlement. Legend has it the place was bewitched by a high German doctor during the early days of settlement. Of 
into the minds of the good people who settled there. However wide awake they may have been before they entered that sleepy region, they are sure in a little time to be subject to trances, visions, and voices in the air. The whole neighborhood abounds with local tales, haunted spots, and twilight superstition. But there is one dominant spirit haunting this enchanted region that is said to be the ghost of a Hessian trooper whose head was carried away by a cannonball during the Revolutionary War and who was ever seen at night hurrying along in the gloom of night as if on the wings of the wind. The ghost rides fought to the scene of the battle in quest of his missing head. <laughs> this spectre is known in all of the country firesides as the Headless Horseman of Sleepy Hollow! And in this by place of nature, I know a worthy white by the name of Pickleball and Crane. He was small but exceedingly lent. With narrow shoulders, long arms and legs, hands that dangled the moil out of his coat sleeves, feet that might have served as shovels. Small, but with a long snipe nose like a weather vane latched upon his spindle neck. To tell which way the wind blew. To see him striding along a hill on a windy day, one might have mistaken him for a scarecrow, <laughs> a loaf from a cornfield. He was, in fact, an odd mixture of small shrewdness and simple credulity. Long before he came to this town, he had a wicked appetite for the marvelous. No tale was too gross or monstrous for his capacious swallow. It was often his delight to wander at the witching hour, flattering his excited imagination, for he had seen many spectres in his time. More than once, in his near terrors of the night, had been beset by Satan in diver shapes. Three times! He would have passed the present life of it, in spite of the devil and his works, if his path had not been crossed by a being who causes more perplexity to mortal man than goats, goblins, and the whole race of witches put together. And that was... A woman. Her name was Katrina Van Tassel, the only child of a substantial Dutch farmer. She was a blooming lass of fresh 18. 16. Ooh. Right. And she was universally famed not merely for her beauty, but for her vast expectations. A uh, miss, pardon me, miss, but would you tell me where I am? Have I passed Taddy Town? Taddy Town? You must not be from around these parts. This is Taddy Town. Ah, of course, Taddy Town. The housewives call it Taddy Town because the husband sent to linger. About the village tavern. There! Well, if all the women are as enchanting as you are, I see why they tarry on for so long. Forgive me. Not at all. I'm Katrina Bar Tuffle. Think about Crane. Crane. Like the bird. <laughs> as I was saying, she was ripe and melting and rosy cheeked as one of her father's peaches. She's a bit coquettish, as perceived in a dress, which was a mixture of ancient and modern fashions as to set off her charms. With a provokingly short petticoat to display the prettiest foot and ankle in all the country round. Between Ichabod's busy fancy and the vision of the beautiful Katrina, the conquest of his heart was complete. If ever a place whither I might steal from the world in its distractions, I can think of none better than this little valley. And yeah. what brings you to this little valley? I'm to be the new schoolmaster at Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow? What marvellous luck! That's where I live. Uh, perhaps we can travel together. But Katrina was not travelling alone. How are you? Wonderful now. Oh, it's been too long. So long. Just have to be a little bit longer, though. Some other time, love. Can I put your plate on? Ah! 
I told you not to run off. Bro, that isn't funny at all. How oh, come, Katrina? You look so much older when you frown. Who's the scarecrow? Ichabod Crane, like the bird. <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, you are? Abraham Von Brutt. Everyone calls me Braun Bones. He was the hero of our country round, which rang with his feats of strength and hardihood. From there, said his hook, you lay in frame. He received his nickname, Braun Bones. He was always ready for either a fight. He was ferocious, but he had much more mischief in his composition than ill will. You see, he was famed for his great knowledge of horsemanship. And cockfight. Fisticuffs! He's the new schoolmaster! Oh, really? Come on, Katrina. You best be getting home before it gets dark. You don't want to be out and about before the galloping Hessian comes riding through. Galloping Hessian? The headless horseman! Don't tell me you haven't heard the stories. I've heard tell. I didn't know he sent to Rome here, in Sleepy Hollow. Oh, yes. He's here. You must get someplace safe before the sun sinks. Or else. Or else. Or else you might lose your head. What's the matter, Rickabod? Don't you like ghost stories? No, not particularly. Then you've come to the wrong town. See you around, schoolboy. And thus did Ichabod Crane come to Sleepy Hollow. Every sound of nature, fueled by hours of dark and mysterious tales, Threaten his excited imagination. The moan of a whippoorwill through the hillside. The dreary haunting of a screech owl. The sudden rustling in the thicket of birds frightened <laughs> from their roots. The fireflies too, which sparkle <laughs> most vividly in the darkest places. Now and then startle them. There's one of uncommon brightness which streams across his path. And see, by judge, that the huge blockhead of a beetle came winging his blustering flies against him. The poor bard would be ready to give up the ghost. And swear he was struck by a witch's choking. His only resource on such occasions was to sing song tunes. And the good people of Sleepy Hollow, as they sat by their doors of an evening, were often filled with awe and hearing his nasal melody and length of sweetness. Long, drawn out, and floating along the dusty road.
devil's going on here?
skipping tambourine lessons. Out of my way! Out! Oh. Stop! No more music! I don't know what you do in Connecticut. But here, when we have a festival, we tell Goat Story! <laughs> Supplies for love. 
My story. You mean our story? <laughs> the dominant spirit that haunts this enchanted region is the apparition of a figure of a man on horseback without a head. It was a massive man in size that stood seven feet tall with shoulders as broad as a bar. It is said that he is the ghost of an old German nursery whose head was carried off by a cannonball in some nameless battle during the Revolutionary War and who has been seen ever and anon whispering along in the gloom of night as if on the wings Wind. But he is not confined to just this valley alone, but to the vicinity of a church and to the adjacent roads at no great distance. In the gloom of night, the Hessian holds forth in nightly quest of his head to the scene of battle. And if he cannot find his own, he takes the first head of the first unfortunate soul to cross his path. Like a streak of light, the Hedgen bolts full, racing against time like a midnight blast to get to the churchyard before daybreak. Many a man have been fouled, shorn at the neck with the pumpkin where his head should be. The dreadful calling card of the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow!
night grew darker and darker. The stars seemed to sink deeper into the night sky, and driving clouds occasionally hid them from his sight. He had never felt so dismal and alone. schoolhouse and strolled idly about the banks of the brook, but no schoolmaster. An inquiry was set on foot on the bank of a broad part of the brook, where the water ran deep and black, was found the hat of the unfortunate Ichabod, and close beside it, a shattered pumpkin. The brook was searched, but the body of the schoolmaster was not to be discovered. From home. Shortly after his rival's disappearance, and after Katrina, in triumph to the altar, was observed to look exceedingly knowing whenever the story of Ichabod was related, always burst into a hearty laugh at the mention of the pumpkin, which led some to suspect that he knew more about the matter than he chose to tell. An old father, several years after, rumored that the schoolmaster had run off been admitted to the bar, turned politician, and been made justice of the ten-pound court. The old country wives, however, who are the best judges of these matters, maintain to this day that Ichabod was spirited away by something more than a foolish prank, something otherworldly. The bridge became more than ever an object of superstitious awe. The schoolhouse, being deserted, soon fell to decay and was reported to be haunted by the ghost of the unfortunate schoolmaster, the loitering homeward. And on a still summer evening, it is often fancied that you can hear Ichabod's voice at a distance, singing a melancholy tune. Among the tranquil solitudes are sleepy.
This was amazing. Brian Cloudus experiences. This is being done in Roseland, Virginia and Granbury, Texas. And if you're near Granbury, good news, a Christmas Carol is coming soon. Go to the description of this video, click on the link to check out Brian Cloudus the website buy your tickets if you're anywhere near it make the drive you want to see this live it's one of the best things i've seen in years i loved it